Good morning. This is Larry Hatfield, and it's time for the Doctor's Corner, and glad you're listening in this morning. I uh, have a special guest this morning. We've been covering, as you've been listening the last couple of weeks, instead of physical tissues, we've been doing spiritual tissues, and we're going to stay with that this week. And I've got Deacon John McCourt here this morning. Good morning, De- Deacon John. Good morning, Doctor. How are you doing this morning? I am blessed this morning. Well, well, I tell you that it's, it is a, a great day. It's a, it's a windy day, so uh, hopefully it's blowing in. Uh, some good things for us to talk about there this morning. Know, exactly, yes. And so, before we get into a little bit of the subject this morning, if you will, tell folks a little bit about how you got to be a, a deacon and became Deacon John. Yes, that's uh, a Holy Spirit thing right there, you know, because I've been in, working all my life in business and what have you, and I had no plans to be a deacon. Uh, I, I was still followed my faith, but, you know, didn't feel the call to do anything more than that. And then, um, I guess it was 2001, I think, I got a call <clears throat> from Moulton, actually, Father Gabriel. He said, would you and your wife like to come for a day of spirituality? And I thought, well, spirituality we all need, right? So we went, and that started me on the journey. And so before I knew it, I was in the diaconate program, and that was one year of spirituality and four years of studies. And uh, so that was a journey. And it was an amazing journey. And so while you were doing that, you were still in the business world, still, well, I, still I, working. We finally handed the business over to the boys before I became a deacon. Uh, because I just, and at that stage, you know, money wasn't that more as important anymore. You know, it was, I love people, I always have loved people. Yes. I enjoyed working with them. And it's, it was a trans. Actually, you know, I think God trained me all the way through life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many children do you and Eileen have? We have seven sons and two daughters and 21 grandchildren and four great-grandchildren. Goodness gracious. So this this couple of work, a little over a week or a week and a half from now, there's going to be a lot of excitement and noise at your house. Oh, my goodness. They, they love, they're already calling about his Santa Claus coming to the Grange. <laughs> <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. So, all right. So what we wanted to talk about a little bit this morning is about the season of Advent. And uh, this is going to be the third Sunday third of Advent. Sunday Advent. And so in the, in the Catholic Church, what, what is the third Sunday of Advent? It's Gadadis. Uh, it's my Irish. Gadadis Sunday, which is joyous, joyful. You know, up until this point, we've been listening to revelations and the Jesus, the Jesus coming a second time and all that goes with that, right? This week, we're talking about the joy. And it's amazing, you know, we really should be joyful all the time. And, and joy is what uh, just makes life interesting. It gives us peace. And joy is not like, like happiness. Happiness fades, but joy stays with us because we believe in the Lord Jesus. And all that he's done for us. It's time to remember that and a time to look at where we're at in our journey and how we can improve and we always can improve. And it's a, it's a, like you said, this is joy because we're getting close to, to the, the to the birth. The birth of Christ, the birth of Christ, yeah. And so what, as we get closer here and, and we, before I forget, I want you to tell folks about what is upcoming at at uh, at Holy Rosary and and then at St. Peter and Paul and Plum. So at Hosting and Plum, what are the celebrations and times of masses, if you remember all of those things? Uh, Well, you know, at at, uh, 90, at 70, (laughs) at 70. Yeah, don't don't be 80 yet. (laughs) At 75 years of age, my memory's filled up pretty good. (laughs) But uh, yes, in in Hosting, we have um, have the the festival. We have, uh, let me see here what I had. Um, we have the masses, of course, Christmas Eve. We have hosting at six with the pageant. The kids do their pageant and plums at four, and uh, they also have their pageant. So we go from one to the other, and those kids are, it's amazing. It really gives us, the spirit of Christmas comes alive when you see those kids. Yes, and it's so much fun to see uh, to see the kiddos, you know, because if you have a, a child or a grandchild or, oh, yeah. you know, or, or Friends whose children are in there. It, it, uh, if you look around in church, you'll see all the smiles on people's oh, faces. Right. It's amazing. Yeah, we have a the, the little ones do a, a, a choir once a month, and I mean they just buzz it out, and the people love that. It get, and you know some of the older folks said, "Could they turn it down a bit?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I don't, no, no, no. Children have no volume button. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, but we do have a, a you know 
We live in a wonderful community. I am blessed to be here. Our family is blessed to be here. It's a good faith community and their willingness to be selfless, to give so much. And the one thing we have in common is the Lord Jesus. We have that in common. We all believe in Jesus Christ. That's for sure. And that's what brings us joy, you know. And we sometimes go about it a little different avenues, but oh, we're, yes. all, we're all trying to get to the same okay. location. That's right. You know, as a matter of interest, we have um, a men's group on a Friday morning in Schulenburg at 6.30, where there's about 30 to 40 men gather. And we have one in, uh, this, uh, here in LaGrange at the KC Hall on a Thursday morning. There's one man, he's uh, interdenominational, right? Earl's his name. Yes. And he's amazing. He has so much tough when it comes to that. And, you know, he said, which was interesting, and I don't know how others might see this, but he would he bless himself, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And he says, I don't understand that why we don't all do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it, it's, for us, or for Catholics, it's a, it's a way of getting into prayer. It's kind remembering. Of, yes. Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. And that's so, but go ahead and finish on the, on the pageants, because oh, yeah. at 4 o'clock at Plum, 6 o'clock at... Hosting That's right. On yeah. Christmas Eve. Right. And, uh, of course, the Masses. And then we have, we have Mass on... Um, you have the other Masses from Mass on um, Sunday morning. Just a regular Christmas Day Mass. We have that. We don't have one at Plum. Just at Hosting. And, Is uh, there still a Midnight Mass? No Midnight Mass. No Midnight wish, Mass. Okay. There was. <laughs> yes. That's I a, used to love those Midnight Masses, you know. But by the time you do the... You and Father do the pageants and the two Masses... And then come back the next day for Christmas Day. Uh, that's a lot. That's a lot of, a lot of time. It is, but you know, it's um, it's not a it's not a burden. It right. Really, not a burden because you know you you get to see all the people. I guess it's difficult for those that can't be there. You know, that's the thing. You know? Right. And uh, and of course, I visit. You know, many out there in the community um, that maybe have lost a husband or a wife, and they're at home and they're lonely. You know, I had a meeting last night in uh, Flatonia with the, the first mate in the Men's Axe Gallery. And so I told them, if there's a neighbor beside them that's living alone, <coughs> go talk to them, go visit them. And I think you just shared with me in there that you visited somebody. Yes. And you spent quite a bit of time with them. Yes. And that's a blessing to do that. And it is, it's uh, something they need, you know, it it's is. something, and, it's, and it, it's also something you need also. Oh, of course. It's in given that we receive, and that's what this is the season of given, you know. I think in, in hosting, we've had, oh my goodness, there have been presents. That, uh, I'll list some of them here if I can see them. They, they give, they, first of all, back in 2005, uh, Monsignor Stanley Petru, I'm sure you yes. remember him, uh, we had a social ministry group. And so we talked about doing 10% of the festival money to go to charity. And there was someone who said, but we need that for this building, we need that for that. But we decided to do it. And Monsignor would say, you cannot outdo God in generosity. <laughs> and that was true because it really helped. And so we give to Habitat for Humanity, we give to the Texas Ramp, we give to hospice. We give to a lot of organizations here. And it's, it's in that given that reminds us all what this season. It's not about materialism. Right. Because we get into materialism then we're... And, and, you know, we're not going to get any spirituality from the politicians, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> That's another whole program. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there. <laughs> no, we're not going to go there today. <laughs> right. So, um, but the, the pageants are the big thing at Christmas. And, yes. And they're leading up to it, like, you know, to, um, to take time to look at our lives, take that peaceful time. And that's difficult for uh, parents that have little ones, it's hard to get that peaceful time. I've talked to some of them, and I know where it was ourselves, you know. But to really sit and just meditate on your life and to give thanks for how God is. You know, when I look back in my life, I would never have dreamt that I'm here today, you know. And it's not because of anything special about me. It's the people that I interacted with that helped me to be what I am today, you know. And, and I mean, we're all made in the image and likeness of Christ, and we're supposed to share with one another. And a smile is there's less muscles in a smile than there is in a frown. In a frown, <laughs> correct. And it's much easier to do that. Oh, it's much easier. And yes. even you know at the store, at, the, at going around town, you know, the, the checkers are. I mean, they're it's a busy time for them to yes. smile at them and thank them yes. and wish them a merry Christmas. You know, that's what I was 
telling someone, I may have said it on radio, is you go to stores and I guess they're conditioned where they have to say happy holidays, mm -hmm. something like that. But right. it, when you say Merry Christmas, they almost, as fast as they can get out of their mouth, oh, Merry Christmas to you. They want to say it. They just, you yeah. know, got to do that. I remember back a couple of years ago, some of the stores, they had a policy that you didn't say Merry Christmas. And I think we, we had a few conversations with them. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but it's Christmas. It's, it's you know, Christmas. And it is holidays, but it is Christmas, and that's why we're having holidays. And I think the other thing, too, about Advent, you know, that uh, sometimes we don't focus on, you know, we focus on the birth of Christ, obviously, you know, to remember that he came on earth and, and that he died for our sins. But the other thing, he's going to come again. Yes. Right? Exactly. <laughs> and we're going to meet him face to face. Yes. <laughs> And so we asked yourself, are, you are we ready for that, you know? And it's good to, because that's joy too. Oh, you definitely. Know, if, you, if you read the, the Old Testament, you know, it's, it can be scary what they say is going to happen. But if you're striving, if you're doing the best you can, you can stand upright and face whatever comes and meet the Lord, you know? Right. And that second coming, that's what we're... That's the second coming. Yes. That's, what we're, that's what we're working toward. That's right. And so, uh, again, this, with the, with the Advent, the next Sunday, the fourth Sunday is... Uh, I'm not sure which one is that. Let's see, that there's peace, hope, joy, and love. Yeah, it could be. Uh, and I'm not sure if it's the if that's love. I get I get confused on the <laughs> on the on the different uh, Sundays of, of what we have. But we're going to celebrate those four, and then then we're there. We're going to be Hello. right, and then, and then we get to see all the pageants and all the uh, youngsters do their thing, and and uh, get to be with family and friends and celebrate. So. That's right, yeah. And again, it's like, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the journey to uh, the birth of Christ. You know, you listen to the radio and the TV and there's advertisements all the time. It's yes. all about the money, you know. Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, materialism will not get you into heaven. No. <laughs> I haven't seen a verse with a U-Haul behind it, you know. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so, you know, it's, it's to remember that materialism is not going to do it for you. As long as you have enough, you know. When, when I resigned, you know, and we handed the company over to the boys, money wasn't important anymore. Surely you have to have enough to live on. Right. But it doesn't control your life. And when it does control your life, then there's not much room left for, for God or Jesus, you know. Nope. And so... There's only room for one, one person to really worship or one thing right. to worship. Yeah. And, you know, again, just, you know, in, in our community, and all the, I think all the churches here have some type of celebration. You mentioned yes. some, right? And they all, we all follow the same kind of traditions in some ways. You know, there's some things that are different, you know, but overall. And I think to belong to a community that is faithful is, you know, that's why we came here with our kids. Because we came here, we visited. We visited Sacred Heart and Weimar and... and uh, there was a there was a feeling of welcome. Now, when we joined hosting way back, um, and we walked in the first time, they were saying the rosary in Czech. <laughs> <laughs> little, it's a little tough when there's, there's, there's a little bit of Irish blood in there, right? <laughs> and they had a hard enough time understanding what it was, you know. But the amazing thing is, they would stop part way through, and they would turn and say it in, in English, you know. So that was the kind of welcome, you know. Yes. And some of the older people there, they would immediately come up and welcome. And that's that's what we're supposed to do. The time to shake hands and and find out, how, you know, when you say to somebody, how are you doing? Really stop and listen to what they have to yes. say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes your mind floats on other things. Oh, and yes. it does, yeah. You know, so, and the time also, you know, in families, um, not all the families are together, you know. There's always little conflicts and and, and it's it's hard it's more difficult in a family like when there's conflicts and so it's a time of forgiving we have to be forgiven you know uh, i'll tell you a quick story yes um my brother-in-law passed away and was buried on monday in ireland <clears throat> and so he was shot in um shot 42 years ago by terrorists nine bullets and they got them all out but one and he survived so he went through life a little debilitated, you know. But um, about five years ago, he went. He walks up to the pub, which he gets a Guinness, right? Right. Every evening. <laughs> and when he walked in, one of his mates said, do you see who's at the end of the bar? He said, who? And he looked down, and it was the guy that shot him. He'd been in prison for 20 years. He'd just got out. 
And so he walked down to him, he took his hand, he says, I forgive you. And that man totally broke down in tears. And he says, you know, this is the first time I felt any peace in my life in the last 20 years. In those 20 years in prison, wow. I was hurting all the time and I couldn't get peace. And I've got it today. And they remained friends until he died. Wow. So that is, to, I mean, yeah. that's difficult. Yes. I don't know how a person could do that. Right. But forgiveness is a gift. Because we can't go before the good Lord and say, here I am, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus says, did you forgive everybody? <laughs> well, you know, yeah. I didn't forgive Frank, but he wasn't forgive. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, like you, you talked earlier, we're all working or striving to get to that second coming and stand in the presence of that's right. God and, yeah. and, uh, and, and be happy that, you know, we've, we've lived a good life. That's, and, it's, it's, you know, it's not easy. No. And because we get, you know, and especially if you get involved in other things and, you know, you can get drawn away from that. And so many young people today are confused, you know. And But everybody wants to know Jesus. Yes. <laughs> they really do, you know. And they can fight it, but it's it, it's there. You know? He's after them all the time. Yes. Really. And it, and uh, I guess in a one sense, you know, it's God never abandons us or no. Jesus never abandons us. Sometimes we abandon him and think that, oh, you know, yeah. that he has left us behind but no we've yeah. turned our back on him yeah i met a man the other day and he says to me would you pray he asked me to pray for somebody close to him he says you're close to to the lord i said not any closer than you <laughs> <laughs> and i said you can pray oh i don't think i could do that <laughs> so god bless him you know yes. but there's a desire there all the time yes you know? and so far you know there's going to be folks that will not be able to attend any oh, kind of church services because, you know, they're uh, they're homebound or, or, you know, maybe in hospital or, or, you know, whatever keeps them from coming to right. church. And yeah. so one of the things I wanted to do is if you could share maybe a little bit with them about uh, what you, you know, this season means and, and, and what it can mean to them to help them through this time, especially if they're, you know, alone right. and, or, and again, can't make church for whatever right. reason. Yeah. And as I say, I've met, you know, I visit people at home, you know, um, I normally go around on Fridays, but other times as well, and the, the hospital and, and the nursing home. And um, the nursing home especially, they just love people to come. Now, I think it's this weekend, the, the kids are going to come there and sing, and that gives them a lift, uplift, you know. Sure. And uh, then I think some of the older people are coming with some music as well, you know, and that's a great thing to do. But then there are those that are home and, you know, they can't get out. And uh, that is difficult. And I think, you know, we have to try to, hopefully the radio is a great access to them, yes. you know, because they can listen to services on the radio and uh, all the rest of it. But I think that it's important that the community recognize that they're there and they're cared for. Everybody's important, you know. And so we have to uh, reach out to them as best we can and let them know that they are important. Uh, there's some in hospital at the moment from our community. Uh, that have been transported recently to St. David's, and that's tough for them. And for somebody that lost a loved one at Christmas, I mean, that is, it's just a bad time. Yes. For them, it's, it's a good time for all of us, but to remember that it's hard for them to let go of that, you know. And uh, somebody that lost somebody two years ago still can't let go and goes to the grave every week he lost a son. And um, so, but God is there for each, every one of us. And we have to kind of let go of... So it's easy for us to say, you know. Right. But in their situation, if they could let go and turn to Jesus completely, he's there and he gives them that comfort. He never leaves any one of us. You know, you have the, the picture of the footsteps in the sand. Yes. Right? When there's, there's exactly. There's of footsteps and then they're gone. You say, well, you weren't there with me. I was carrying right. at that time. So I think Jesus is there for us all the time. And of course, for us too, the Blessed Mother, we call her to intercede for us that we don't worship her like we worship god you right. know which is a mother and, and a mo like back in the day i would go to my my mom and say would you ask dad if i could have this <laughs> <laughs> so once the boys done that too with eileen you know we'd go to her so but i think it is a, a it's a time to be aware that we are blessed and to think of those that are suffering or those that have lost someone or those don't have what we have whether it's, whether it's um, financial or spiritually. And I know this, I just talked to a lady the other day that her, she's had difficulty financially 
It's just a single mother and she has two kids. And she doesn't live around here, you know. But uh, that's all going on. And you don't know that if you don't take time and, and visit people, smile at them and ask them how they're doing and then wait for an answer, you know. And, you know, especially, you know, for the folks, the, like you said, the, the nursing home bound folks or the hospital bound folks. And, right. and they may be alone, but, you know, they're really not alone. They're they're just not, never, not any of us are alone. No. All of, but we have to be aware of that, you know. And, and go and and get into that prayer business. Yes. <laughs> prayer. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> <laughs> That's your specialty, right? <laughs> you know, I, every morning, every morning and every night, uh, we, we sit down and we pray. And we ask God to be with us, you know, to guide us. And whatever comes along, to have the strength of the Holy Spirit to guide us. And I'm a big believer in the Holy Spirit, you know. Um, Monsignor Stanley was too. And I think that that's what we start our day. Now, sometimes in the morning you're not feeling too fresh of yourself, you know. And maybe uh, we get up around 5, 6 o'clock, you know. I didn't always do that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember way back when I started the journey into the diaconate, the, the spiritual director said, I want you to take 15 minutes every morning and pray. Well, I was working. Yes. You know, I had to get up at 7 o'clock and, and go. And, you know, it meant I'd have to get up earlier to do that. <laughs> so I started doing that, and it's become it's become a, a one thing we do all the yes. time. And the thing about it is, the more you do it, the more you enjoy it. Yes. It's yeah. like going to church. You know, those say, well, I don't need to go to church. Well, if you go, you're going to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you know. Exactly. <laughs> with the community that's there that's trying to live the same as you are. I mean, yeah, I think morning prayers are almost like your daily vitamin. Daily vitamin. You could point, yeah. Yes. That is true, yeah. And it, it helps you get going for the day and right. help carry you through the day. And, you know, in hosting and Plum, we have two wonderful communities of being aware of giving, you know, of uh, greeting people when they come to church, you know. They do that at hosting and Maxine at Plum is amazing. I mean, she, <laughs> she's there shaking hands and how are you doing? She knows everybody. Yes. And, you know, people come from Elgin, from Bastrop to come to church there. You know, and it's because of being welcome. Somebody said to me one time, the reason I'm in this church is because somebody greeted me and welcomed me. Yes, and, and that's, that's, uh, that's really important too because you go to, if you're a new person, you come to a church and you're just kind of left alone as an outsider. Oh, that's not good. That's horrible. Horrible, yeah. Yes, and, and that's... And we have the, uh, you know, we have the prayer list at church and um, everybody um, can call in if somebody's sick, somebody homebound, and there's a big long list, and that's there, and we mention those at the at the masses, you know. So, in a prayer list, it works. <laughs> it, it works. It does. Lifting yeah. those people up in prayer, it does work. Because uh, God answers all our prayers. Every prayer, it does not turn any away. He says, anything you ask in prayer, will you have received it before you finish praying? <laughs> so, <laughs> that's so, good. So. We're getting kind of getting close to our time, so um, I know you wanted this morning before we got away is to offer a, a special prayer yeah. for the folks that are listening in and for uh, for the community as well. So right. if, I think you know, as we go through life, people touch our lives, people help form us who we are by their by their lives, and that's our challenge to be that for some others. And Monsignor Stanley Petru, who's hopefully with the Lord today, you know, he was a great inspiration to me. And he was very kind and very, um, he was great for everybody, you know. And so he, there's a prayer he said at the end of every Mass, and I'll do it now. All right. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come live in your people and strengthen them by your grace. Give them the guidance of the Holy Spirit, health of mind and body, perfect love for one another, and may Almighty God bless all today. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beautiful prayer. Beautiful <laughs> prayer. So if any of you uh, probably would like a copy of that prayer. Certainly I can get it to them. Just uh, probably call Hosting. Call Hosting. Call church Hosting, office. Yeah. Yes. And, and we can get a, a pastor. To them, right? Yeah. Deacon John can get you a copy of that prayer. Right. And uh, it's easy to do these days because you can take a picture with your phone, send that picture over, and you got it. You know, so it doesn't have to go snail mail. No, it does not. And that's so it. we thank you for the time. Oh, it's I've known been great. you a long time. Yes. You know, for a long time you've been 
pulling teeth out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> but you do so much, and you've always done so much. Well, appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. So God bless you. God bless you, too. And so with that, we're going to kind of wrap it up this morning. And so if you're going out this weekend, we ask you to take the gifts the good Lord's given you and share them with the people that you meet so that they can take those same gifts and share them with the people they meet and keep passing it forward and forward. And as always this morning, if you woke up with an attitude, make it an attitude of gratitude. And remember, attitude gives you altitude. And we'll talk to you next week. Very good. 59.